cycling in the winter can be tough. You don't need me to tell you that, of course. But in this video, I'm gonna share the top tips I use to get through the next few months. From setting up your bike, to what clothing to wear, to simple bike maintenance. And these are lessons learned the hard way over the last 25 odd years. Basically half my life riding bikes. So don't make the mistakes I've made. Follow my tips for a happy winter of cycling. And if you have your own tips, recommendations, feel free to add to the comment section below. Now, before we dive in, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it dead easy and simple to build a professional looking website. Whether you run a bike shop and need an online store to take your business to the next level, you're a photographer and need a gallery, you have a bike brand and you want a cool portfolio to show off your products, Squarespace is the place to be. And building a website really is simple. There's a massive library of award-winning templates to get you up and running, and you customize how the website looks with a drag and drop interface. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. So if you want to elevate your website game this year, then Squarespace is a place to do it. So if you like the sound of that and what not to like, you get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase using my special code down below. Okay, let's start with the bike. And of course, any bike will do. Whatever bike you have is just fine for winter riding. Not everybody is in a position to have money or space for a winter bike. And what I'm looking for in my winter bike setup, regardless of the bike you're using, is to minimize the potential for any mechanical mishaps or the bike to let you down when you least want it. And a few are obvious. So the lights are very sensible. Even daytime lights like these are a good option. And then a bigger front light if you are riding in the dark or commuting in the morning and evening. Next, you want a well-equipped saddlebag like this one here. Probably one on your bike already, but if you don't, you definitely want one in the winter. So inner tube, CO2, tire levers, patch kit, tubeless repair kit, whatever you need to get your bike up and running. And then of course, a good quality pump. And not one of these little tiny ones, they pump it like mad to try and get up to 50 psi and leave you all sweaty and hot. Get a high quality pump that goes on a frame or in your pocket. So if you do have a flat tire, you can get it back up to pressure much more easily than those little daft mini pumps that are just no good at all. Now, the other recommendation I would make, regardless of what bike you're riding, are to fit some good quality tires. I would go wider for more comfort and traction when the roads are slippery and covered in filth and then go for a more robust tire. And there are plenty of options for winter tires from the Conti Gator Skin at one end, which are really tough, heavy, but the ride quality isn't that great, but you won't get a puncture at all, to a growing number of tires from the likes of Specialized, Pirelli, and others who do a more robust version of their race tire. So a bit more puncture and protection and a tread compound designed to work in lower temperatures and on wet roads. I would personally recommend going tubeless as well because I found the benefits of tubeless to be bigger during the winter when the last thing you want when it's peeing down rain and it's freezing cold and you can't feel your fingers is to get a puncher and try and change inner tube, take the wheel out of the frame and all that palaver. So I first discovered the benefits of tubeless during winter riding and that's why I've become a real advocate of it. And if you are prepared to invest the time and money in tubeless, it really pays off handsomely in winter riding. The other thing I would definitely recommend, and it's based on my own personal experience, is a good set of mud guards. Now, a bike like the Roubaix does have mud guard mounts, so you can fit some nice full length mud guards to the frame, but not all bikes have mud guard mounts, especially a race bike. But you can get some nice clip on mud guards now that go onto the seat post or onto the frame that offer a reasonable amount of protection from all the road spray but less for the rider behind you. So full length mud guards are the gold standard for rain protection and for the rider behind you, and if you're riding in a group. But if you're riding on your own and you don't have mud guard mounts, then a clip on mud guard is a good idea. Now you can absolutely go to town on specking and building a dedicated winter bike. And I have done videos on this in the past and I'll put a link to it down below in the description. But if you're using the bike you have, then it's worth making a few changes and tires, some basic mud guards, lights, and a good saddlebag are my basic recommendations for making sure your bike is gonna be reliable and look after you at the time of year. 
Okay, let's talk about clothing and what you wear on your body, keep you warm and dry at this time of year. And what you choose depends on the conditions you are trying to face. Whether it's cold and windy and dry, like today, about eight degrees right now, so chilly, but not freezing cold, or whether it's warm and wet and moist, like it is in the UK, so much of the winter. And also how fast you're riding, the speed, the tempo you're riding at can have an influence on the clothing you wear. And if you're riding faster, you wear thinner clothing, riding slower, you wear thicker clothing. And my approach is to have as much clothing as possible to suit all the conditions you might face, and then to layer up. Start with a base layer, a thin base layer, or a thick base layer, then a jersey, then a jacket, or a gilet, and have different options so you can choose the clothing to suit different conditions from one day to the next, or even during a ride as well. So right now, as I mentioned, it's about eight degrees, but it's quite windy. So the wind chill factor is definitely making it feel colder than it actually is. So I have some nice thin gloves, and then a long sleeve jersey jacket over a thick short sleeve base layer, and then a pair of tights, some thicker socks than normal, and a pair of neoprene uh, toe warmers over my shoes. I've also got a neck and ear warmer as well. Now, when it gets colder, and in the UK, it gets down to about zero. I might go for bigger gloves, some overshoes, and maybe a long sleeve base layer underneath the jacket, and then either a narrow jacket over top of this one, or a gilet, or a narrow jacket entirely. When it gets wet, of course, you need to add a rain jacket, some waterproof gloves, and some waterproof overshoes as well. And then, if you're trying to ride when it's dark, either the early morning, late evening commute, or visibility isn't as good as it is now, it's worth adding some reflective details to your clothing. Lots of clothing has reflective details on, as you can see here, but I've been testing this garment from Apidura, and there are other versions available, which is a really good option for easily and quickly adding extra visibility when you're cycling. So it doesn't look cool, I know, but this will give you full 360 degree visibility when you're riding in the dark or it's just overcast and very gloomy. And better to be safe than worry about how it looks. It's made from a lightweight mesh, so breathable and doesn't affect the qualities of the jacket you're wearing it over, whether a waterproof or a windproof like this. So pretty cool and you can take it off very easily and it's small enough to go in a jersey pocket. So I'll put a link to that down below, not sponsored by them, just something I'll be testing and being really impressed with. I love products like this, really well thought out, designed by cyclists for cyclists. So in the back pocket, that goes. Looking after your bike and the maintenance of your bike becomes a bigger concern and issue during the winter months. You're riding on roads covered in filth, mud, and often salt and left on a bike and not washed on a regular basis can lead to corrosion and other issues you don't want. So washing your bike on a frequent basis is something I recommend. And there are loads of good quality cleaners on the market these days. Some even let you wash your bike without any water. So good for a regular wash on a daily basis. And then some for a more deep and thorough clean when it gets filthy, muddy and dirty and you have to go to town on it and get it back to its pristine state. You definitely need to look after the drivetrain on your bike because that's a part for the bike that will wear out and when it does, it's gonna cost you money. So more incentive to keep it clean to ensure the longevity of the components. And the chain is something you want to oil or lube on a regular basis too. There are many different ways to look after the chain. You can wax it, of course, at one approach, or use a dry lube, which I like when it's dry, like it is today, because the chain doesn't get filthy. But when I'm riding in the rain and the roads are covered in mud, I prefer an oil-based lube because I find it lasts longer between applications than a dry lube or wax lube, which can get washed off very easily. And there are lots of good quality lubes on the market these days. I'll put my personal recommendations down below in the description, and you can let me know what you use by leaving a comment down below.